14 years of disappointment, of hell, and lost careers, homes, children, and self-worth for six women that worked on a virus. Before we had this virus, there was another virus. It was called the subprime mortgage loan virus. It dates back all the way to 2005. 2005, George W. Bush was just starting his second term in office when this case started. Colleen Colombo and six of her co-workers were mortgage underwriters for BNC Mortgage. They were a subsidiary of the Lehman Brothers. They started getting these unusual requests in their office, loans for people that didn't look like they could afford the loan initially and definitely couldn't afford the loan when it adjusted. But that wasn't good enough for the sales force that had quotas that wanted to meet their quotas. They tried to bribe some of the underwriters, like Colleen, who had worked 20 years starting as a receptionist and had built her career up to being a senior underwriter, earning over $90,000 a year and owning a home in Sacramento. When the bribes didn't work, they brought in a character named Chester the Molester. That's what they nicknamed him. He started sexually harassing these five and six women that wouldn't jeopardize their morals, their character, their career for these subprime mortgages. They knew it was bad for the customer and they knew it was bad for the mortgage company. It actually almost brought the entire world to its financial knees. Gary and Randy took on this case. They filed it as a sexual harassment and whistleblower case. The defense attempted to move it into arbitration. Gary and Randy won that motion. The defense appealed. 30 days before the appeal was to be heard, BNC shut down their entire operation and they let go of 1,200 people. About two months later, Lehman Brothers files for bankruptcy, the largest bankruptcy in the history of the United States, sending the entire financial world into disarray. These women who had lost everything, they couldn't get a job, they were blackballed in the industry, they were called whistleblowers, they couldn't get another job anywhere, they couldn't even get an interview, they lost everything. Colleen Colombo, she lost her husband and was left alone with a two-year-old girl. She went on welfare. She lived out of her freaking car. She had to live out of motels. She ultimately ended up on her aunt's farm in Oklahoma in a back house on welfare. That's what happened to these women. And then when it went into bankruptcy, they were completely lost. Turned to alcohol, turned to drugs, depression, suicidal attempts, all the while, Gary and Randy hung on to this case. They hired a bankruptcy firm. They tried to work their way through that. Six years they waited through the bankruptcy. They're told they're gonna get nothing. Finally, they get a phone call around 2016. They say, hey, uh, maybe we will get together with a mediation. Oh my God, we might get our clients some money outside of the bankruptcy. They go back to New York, they meet with them, they offer them less than 100000 per person for their total lives destroyed. Gary and Randy come back. A year later, they go, oh, we have more money. We have more money. We don't have much, but we have more money. How about 115000 per person? Nothing, right? They come back. Two more mediations in New York. The bankruptcy judge tells them, you're wasting your time. You're never going to get these people anything. Take the money. Gary and Randy said no. They had over a half a million dollars invested in it and they hung on for these women and they hung on and they got the case settled for over $5 million, over a million dollars each for the players. I talked to Colleen Colombo on the phone. She broke down. She said her entire life was changed by this case. Gary William became her father. He loaned her money for food. He paid over $22,000 out of his own pocket over 14 years for these people. It's unbelievable what they did in this case. It makes me proud to be a lawyer. I look at the factors in this case. I look at them justice for victims. 
a skill of the attorney going through the bankruptcy. They had to hire a bankruptcy firm. Are you kidding me? These guys went through hell with their clients for 14 years. Service to CAOC. Gary Gwilliam, I talked to two people about that. Gary Gwilliam, I talked to Rick Simmons. He said that Gary Gwilliam, we wouldn't have CTLA or CAOC without Gary Gwilliam. We were less than one point away from having a 10% contingency fee cap in 1988. That's the truth. We went to bed that night and didn't know what we would wake up to. I talked to Brown Green. What does Brown Green say? He says, Gary Gwilliam was a general that led his troops into battle 30 years ago. And what do most generals do after they win that war? They go out, they retire, they move on. What did Gary Gwilliam do? Gary Gwilliam went back and got his helmet on and his weapon and his jacket and went back in to the battle and climbed back into the foxhole with all of us for 30 more years and he's still going right now. I mean, this is a unique opportunity to thank a guy who's never won before. Are you kidding me? This case screams for what we, what we respond for, what we stand for, and who we believe in. Gary Gwilliam and Randy Strauss make you proud to be a trial lawyer. 14 years of hell and disappointment, and they came through for their clients and changed every one of their lives, and they changed the way people look at those subprime loans and those whistleblowers back in 2005. Vote for them. Thank you.